You want to see the real world of male modeling? The one they don't show you in magazines or the E Channel? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies about the fashion industry. It's a famine of beauty. It's a famine of beauty, honey. My eyes are starving for beauty. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. I'm deadly serious about all this, it would be terribly funny. For this list, we're looking at films that take models, magazines and moguls as their subjects. Did we miss any must-see movies for fashionistas? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Bill Cunningham, New York The New York Times' acclaimed style photographer and columnist is the subject of this documentary. See, a lot of people have taste, but they don't have the daring to be creative. Here we are in an age of the cookie-cutter sameness. There are few that are rarities. Jumping between his daily bike route, his office, and his tiny Manhattan apartment, the film portrays the late photojournalist's fascination with street style and the ways everyday people dress. His archive is really not just an encapsulation of fashion, but of New York life. While a slew of industry heavy hitters appeared to discuss his legacy, the film remains focused on Cunningham's single-minded passion for clothing, regardless of who is wearing it. It's not only a decades-spanning educational experience for fashion devotees, but also a timeless portrait of an artist who has simply perfected his craft. You can't report to the public unless you've seen it all. People just go off and say what they think. Well, it isn't really what I think, it's what I see. Number 9. Scatter My Ashes at Bergdorf's This documentary focuses on the history of Bergdorf Goodman, the legendary luxury department store in Midtown Manhattan. So glamorous. Oh my god, everything that implies beauty, excitement. It's such a part of New York. It's just the epitome of the city. The film looks at multiple points of view on the New York City fashion institution, including those of celebrity clients, employees and designers who have vied for a spot in the store. It pays particular attention to the tireless work put into Bergdorf's elaborate window dressings as designed by David Hoey. These windows have been a form of fine installation art, and David does that on a daily basis. I want the windows to almost be perceived as hallucinations. Featuring engaging interviews detailing how a storefront became a cultural landmark, the film exposes the unseen labor that has powered Bergdorf's reputation. Come for the beautiful clothes, stay for the fascinating people. You know, there's a customer who's trying something, you say, oh, that's terrible, really terrible, but buy it because it's not as terrible as what you came in wearing. What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't doing this? Drinking. Number eight, blow up. Set in the mod subculture of 1960s London, this mystery thriller focuses on a disturbing discovery made by fashion photographer Thomas. After blowing off a photo shoot to take pictures of strangers in a park, he finds he may have captured a murder on film. Who was he? Someone. Surrounded by fashionable social circles of his city, Thomas grapples with this reality while leading a lifestyle of sex, drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> With its combination of eerie atmosphere and an immersive portrayal of an iconic subculture, the film won accolades, including the Palm d'Or at Cannes. For highlighting its era's iconic style, Blow Up has earned a reputation as a counterculture masterpiece. That's good. And the hair back, and the hair back. Come on, that's great. That's great. That's good. Good. Come on, more of that. More of that. Now give it to me. Really give it to me. Come on now. Number seven, the September issue. This documentary chronicles the turbulent production of Vogue magazine's most important and then longest monthly release in 2007, with editor-in-chief Anna Winter exerting an iron grip on the publication's design and execution. Tensions sometimes run high behind the scenes. She sees her role as the director and producer of this fashion world. Can you think of an aspect of the fashion industry that she isn't somehow involved in? Viewers are transported into a world of top designers, photo shoots, and conflicting imaginations as creative designer Grace Coddington fights to have her vision realized on the page. 
they've probably thrown out $50,000 worth of work. I care very much about what I do. I do or I wouldn't be still doing it. By revealing the goings-on at a fashion industry mainstay and providing insight into its biggest personalities, the film is equal parts profile and expose. Although its focus is fashion, its exploration of power, control and infamy is universal and downright juicy. Is anyone coming to this run-through except for me? What else? Number six, Coco before Chanel. This French biopic chronicles the rise of the iconic designer and fashion house founder. Elle est prête à dépenser une fortune pour que tu lui en fasses. Je lui dis qu'il y avait peu d'espoir. Beginning with her lesser-known childhood in an orphanage, the film follows her career as a singer in a music hall and the big break she got thanks to a wealthy lover. Tu ne comptes quand même pas sérieusement travailler, hein? Ça n'a pas de sens. Tu t'en penses? Je pense qu'elle a raison. What begins as a side job sewing dresses quickly turns into a lucrative hat business as Chanel navigates romance and develops her craft. While it doesn't delve into her greatest triumphs, this drama provides a delicately human portrayal of the visionary whose no-nonsense designs have influenced generations. Oh, T'es pas drôle. L'idée c'est qu'on voit un peu mes cuisses, mes seins, non C'est beaucoup plus excitant si on les devine. Star Audrey Tartu may be best known for Amelie, but her restrained performance here deserves just as much praise. As far as fashion history goes, this film can't be missed. Number 5. Funny Face Film greats Audrey Hepburn and Fred Astaire co-star in this musical romantic comedy about the makings of an unlikely fashion ingenue. Now what's wrong with bringing out a girl who has character, spirit and intelligence? That certainly would be novel in a fashion magazine. When two higher-ups at a fashion magazine decide they want their brand to be brainy as well as beautiful, they enlist a young bookstore attendant as their newest model. Oh, how could I be a model? I have no illusions about my looks, I think my face is funny. Although skeptical about the industry, she embarks on a trip to Paris and finds herself grappling with an attraction to renowned photographer Dick Avery. Despite being a real-life style icon, Hepburn nails her role as a fashion-averse intellectual and naturally looks great doing it. If that weren't enough, her gorgeous costumes were designed by Hubert de Givenchy himself. The hair, the dress, it's perfection. You see how much we accomplish when you appear. Now do try to stay with us for a while. Number four, Yves Saint Laurent. This French biographical drama takes a look at the height of the legendary couturier's career from the late 50s through to the 70s. Et peut-on savoir ce que vous comptez faire pour votre premier défilé? Au pire, je ferai de mon mieux, naturellement. After taking over the house of Dior at only 21, Saint Laurent develops his signature style and embarks in a lifelong romantic and professional relationship with Pierre Berger, the film's narrator. Berger's recollection of Saint Laurent's genius as well as struggles with substance abuse and mental illness makes for a unique spin on the biopic formula. Tu es entré en maladie comme on entre en religion. Mais tu mettais tes dernières forces à préparer tes collections. Tu n'étais heureux que deux fois par an, au printemps et à l'automne. Although it doesn't shy away from the designer's issues, the film tells a powerful tale of overcoming as Saint Laurent goes on to found his own label. With costumes on loan from the couple's personal collection, this tumultuous love story couldn't get any more chic. Yeah. Je suis là. Number three, ready to wear, prêt à porter. While some movies pay tribute to the business of selling clothes, others aren't so generous. Is that fashion? Is it? I mean, is there a message out there? I mean, you got a lot of naked people wandering around here. This satirical comedy drama royally imagines the goings on at a particularly dramatic Paris Fashion Week. With a sprawling ensemble cast of 31 characters and countless recognizable faces, there's a plotline for every viewer and then some. With 86 collections to view, vision blurs. 
and judgment is occasionally impaired. Playing on archetypes like snooty designers, out-of-touch news reporters, and waning fashion icons, the spoof takes a refreshingly humorous look at the sometimes pretentious industry. Director Robert Altman is known for his subversive approach to filmmaking, and this sardonic take on the foibles of fashion elite is both brutal and hilarious. I think, I think shoulders are very fresh again, and of course legs. She doesn't have to have legs, but oh, it's, it's wonderful if she does. Number two, Zoolander. Ben Stiller is really, really, really ridiculously good looking as the eponymous character in this classic action comedy of the early aughts. With his career threatened by newcomer Hansel, the once successful and always dim-witted male model falls prey to a sinister plot. Models don't think for themselves. They do as they're told. That is not true. Yes, it is, Derek. OK. A fashion Svengali by the name of Mugatu tricks Zoolander into becoming a sleeper agent bent on killing a progressive political figure. Do as you've been trained to do and kill the Malaysian Prime Minister! <laughs> if that weren't ridiculous enough, the film contains numerous iconic scenes lampooning the world of models and designers, with Zoolander's signature blue steel face standing out in particular. For its outlandish take on the politics and power dynamics of the business, this film has earned its iconic status in pop culture. Oh, Derek, you did it! That was amazing! I know! I turned left! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Dior and I. This French documentary follows Raph Simmons' first collection as creator-director of Dior. So in that sense, the past is not romantic for me, it's the future that is romantic for me. The Neon Demon. This psychological horror film finds a young model in over her head in LA's modeling scene. You know what my mother used to call me? Dangerous. You're a dangerous girl. She was right. Valentino, the last emperor. The eccentric designer takes center stage in this light-hearted documentary. To be with Valentino as a friend, as a lover, as, a, as an employee is a bit the same. You need a lot of passion. Mannequin. Kim Cattrall plays a department store mannequin come to life in this rom-com. What's the matter? Don't you like your new scarf? Not especially. Shh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Devil Wears Prada Anne Hathaway and Meryl Streep go head-to-head -head in this beloved comedy drama. When fashion illiterate journalism grad Andrea Sachs lands a job at a premier fashion magazine, she has no idea what's in store. Who is that sad little person? Are we doing a before and after piece I don't know about? Despite editor-in-chief Miranda Priestley subjecting her to near-impossible tests, Andy manages to impress, but at the cost of her closest relationships. You know, in case you were wondering, the person whose calls you always take, that's the relationship you're in. I hope you two are very happy together. Although Vogue magazine may have inspired the narrative in part, Streep's Priestley takes on a life of her own as one of the most nightmarish movie bosses of all time. With razor-sharp wit and a nuanced perspective on the role of elite fashion institutions, this film is as thoughtful as it is fun. Everybody wants this. Everybody wants to be us. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.